Okay, I'm excited to talk to you today about zwitter ions in no small part because it's just a dang cool vocabulary word. So what I want to talk about is the acid-base properties of amino acids, of alpha amino acids. So we have amino acids that are in proteins. These are the monomers that make up the polymers that are proteins. And so the amino acid structure is usually written like this. We have an amine group, we have a carboxylic acid group, hence the name amino acid. We have this R group here. And if we know a little bit about acid-base chemistry, at least the Bronsted-Lowry version. So Bronsted-Lowry were um, a couple scientists who had defined acids and bases based on the movement of protons. So Bronsted-Lowry says that an acid is a proton donor and a base is a proton acceptor. And by proton here, we mean a hydrogen ion, because if we think about a hydrogen, it's one proton, one electron. When it loses that one electron and becomes a positively charged hydrogen, then all that's left is the one proton in its nucleus. So we're really looking at the movement of protons here. Acids like to donate them, bases like to accept them. So if we look at this structure, an amine group is basic. It likes to accept protons, right? It accepts protons because that amine can become ammonium. And my carboxylic acid group, uh, sort of like the name implies, is acidic because it has a, an acidic hydrogen. So this hydrogen likes to leave. We can gain a hydrogen here, right? So proton acceptor and then proton donor. So the amine is accepting the hydrogen ion, the carboxylic acid is donating. So if it's kind of doing this to itself, it's essentially neutralizing itself, where one side of the molecule is acting like an acid and the other side is acting like a base. It's kind of wacky. It forms a structure, which is kind of rare, that is called a dipolar ion. So this kind of self-neutralization causes a dipolar ion. This is kind of a weird term because we're used to thinking about dipoles on polar molecules and to put dipole and ion in the same kind of vocabulary, it sort of breaks one's chemistry brain. But dipolar ions are ions that have both positive and negative charges, so one of each, and then they cancel each other out, which is sort of a funky term then because if we have something that cancels each other out, in terms of charges, that means the net charge is zero. So there's no net charge, which would make you believe that it's not really an ion, but it has no net charge because it has two charges on it and those charges balance each other out. So it's kind of a wacky thing and it's called, um, because of its wackiness, a zwitter ion. You get a wacky term for a wacky thing. Zwitter ion comes from German. I'd assume that it's pronounced something like Zwitter. And it's German for hybrid. So it's a hybrid ion. That's kind of what we're looking at here. These dipolar ions, kind of a weird thing. Again, we usually think of dipoles with polar bonds, nonmetals with other nonmetals. That's what we're talking about here is a group of nonmetals that then is acting like an ion, more like a polyatomic ion, but there's two charges on it and those charges balance out. So when this, amino acid undergoes this kind of self-neutralization where we lose this hydrogen and then we gain it over here on the amine side, donate, accept, then we end up with a structure that looks like this. And many times amino acids are written in this way where we have a positive side here from this gained hydrogen, this accepted hydrogen. So that gives you an ammonium instead of an amine. And then we have this carboxylic acid group that is missing its acidic hydrogen. All right, so this is the way that you'll often see amino acids um, in their normal everyday kind of form. And if you put this then in different environments in terms of pH, so if you put it in an acidic environment or in a basic environment, then it's gonna behave in different ways because it can act because it has the two sides like either an acid or a base. So it's gonna react in different ways. Okay, so if I put it with an acid, so here's my zwitter ion with my two charges, one side that's positive, one side that's negative. 
If I put it in an environment with a low pH, meaning that I have an acidic environment, there are hydrogen ions present, then this hydrogen is going to want to jump on to this oxygen here, forming this guy. So this hydrogen didn't do this to itself. It's coming from the external environment. So whatever solution chemistry is happening here. And now we have our carboxylic acid that's whole again. But what we end up with in this ion is a net positive charge. Because the Zwitter ion reacted with the hydrogen in solution, now all we have left is the positive charge on my ammonium side of things. Now as you can maybe kind of intuit, if I put this in a basic environment, so something with a high pH, meaning that it has a large concentration of hydroxide ions, the hydrogen from my ammonium is going to react with that hydroxide. So we're going to lose that hydrogen, which gives us this. Here's our amine group back but we still have that oxygen with a negative charge on our carboxylic acid side. So we have a net negative charge here. So these Witter ions in low pH environments will react with that hydrogen, giving kind of a net positive charge on the Witter ion. It's no longer a Witter ion anymore. And in bases, that's going to take my hydroxide and that will leave me with a product of water as well. So the hydroxide reacts with the hydrogen from the ammonium and then we end up with a net negative charge left over on our amino acid. Now different amino acids like to be in different environments and the charge on them is going to be based on kind of some structural features about the amino acids. So all amino acids have this backbone in common. They have the carboxylic acid, the amine, and the hydrogen off of my alpha carbon here. But what's unique for each of my amino acids is that R group or the side chain. And that R group is what actually determines what is called the isoelectric point. So the pH at which amino acids are electrically neutral, meaning that the net charge on them is zero, meaning that the charges are going to balance each other out. So if we're kind of thinking of our Zwitter ion here that we're starting off with, the point at which it exists as the Zwitter ion and these charges balance each other out is going to be uh, dependent on the pH of the solution. And each one of these is going to have a slightly different pH that it's, you can kind of think about it as comfortable at. And that's dependent on this side group here. And so we call that point, that pH level, the isoelectric point. And it's abbreviated a lowercase p capital I. And again, different for different amino acids based on the side group. So we said that there are 20 different amino acids, so we have 20 different isoelectric points. There might be some that are close to each other, but it's still based on the side chains. Okay. So sometimes you'll see these um, listed out. So usually for these amino acids, they'll be listed by kind of what their structure is. So you get to see the different R groups. You'll see the three letter uh, designation for their name. You'll see the one letter designation for their name. And oftentimes you'll see the isoelectric point at which they're most comfortable. And if you recall from past videos or past knowledge, these different amino acids are characterized in different ways. So the neutral ones can be either polar or nonpolar in those R groups and those side chains. And those neutral ones sit at a more neutral kind of pH. Their isoelectric points are in the more neutral range. But when we get to the acidic ones, then their isoelectric points tend to be on the more acidic side. And when we get to the basic ones, their isoelectric points are more on the basic side. So based on what that R group is, based on the characteristics and the properties of that R group, give us information about what pH these amino acids are going to be electrically neutral, which again is important because of the interactions between these different amino acids as we start to build up the structure of these more complicated proteins. Okay, so kind of fun. So Zwitter ions, acid-base chemistry, 
we're getting into some pH here. Now as we're building these things up and adding them all together, now we're going to talk about how they interact with each other and build all of these proteins with all of these cool functions. If you have any questions on this, don't hesitate to reach out. Otherwise, I'll talk to you again soon.